Hey, it's Chris McCord, and this is Sync. So Sync lets you build real-time Rails applications by turning your partials real-time and having them listen for updates from the server. It's a great alternative to heavy client-side MVC frameworks, and it allows you to use a standard Rails stack that we all know and love and have been so productive with over the last several years. In just a moment, we're going to get it installed, and then I'll show you in just how in a matter of minutes we can change a non-real-time application real-time with Sync. So there's only a few steps required to get this set up, but before we do that, let's take a look at the application we're going to be making in real time. So we're simulating two different users here, one with the browser on the left and one with the browser on the right. And we're looking at a to-do application modeled after Basecamp. It has a few models, a user has many projects, a project has many to-dos, and a to-do has many comments. So the goal is, if we make a change on the left, the user on the right should see it immediately. Because right now, if we mark this first to-do as complete, we go through a full browser refresh, we see it's crossed off, but the users on the right would have to refresh their page to pick up that change. So I'll show you how easy this is to set up with Sync. So let's first get it installed here. We're using Fay locally in development, but you can use Pusher as well. I plan on using Fay in development and Pusher in production for my apps. So we'll go ahead and add this to our gem file. And then run bundle to get it installed. Okay. Then we can run the install generator. So this copied a couple files into our project. One is a configuration file and one is a little rack app for the face server. We'll go check out that configuration file in that's sync.yaml and we'll let it run on localhost with a default port 9292. So all we need to do is give it an auth token. I do recommend you set something secure here. After we have that set up, we'll go into our application manifest, either your application coffee or application JS for your asset pipeline. And go ahead and require sync here. And then go into your application layout and include the adapter JavaScript here. This will include either pusher or fay.js from the Fay server. Next step is to start up our rack app. So we can do that with rack up, sync.ru, and we'll run it in production mode. And then for your Rails app, don't forget to restart your server so it picks the changes up. We're running Unicorn here. We'll give that a restart. And now we're ready to start making our application in real time. So we're looking at our project show view here. This is a pretty standard Rails partial rendering. We're rendering a partial for the project header, and then we're going through each of the project's to-dos and rendering out a partial for each of the cable rows. And that's what you saw on this page here. So here's the partial for the project header, and then each of the rows here is its own partial for each to-do. So pretty standard uh, rendering here. So if we want to make this real time, all we have to do is change render partial to sync partial. Then we can drop the leading directory name, which I'll tell you why in a moment. And instead of locals, we can pass in a resource of that to do. Since we dropped the directory slash, we actually move this into a special app view sync directory. So I'll go ahead and create that. And then within that, I'll pluralize the resource name we're trying to make real time, which is to do's. So all of our real time partials for to do's will live in an app view sync to do's directory. So then I, I need to move the to do list row from the to do's folder into the sync to do's folder. I'll just do that on the command line real quick. All right, so I move that here. And the only other step for this is then to notify all of those partials listening on the browser that we have updates for them. So in the controller, to-do's controller, I have an update action and on successful update, we can then say sync update to do. And that's it. So let's see if it works. We'll go back to our app and refresh. Everything looks as it used to, which is good. But then if you watch, I'll go ahead and mark this top to do as complete on the left and pay attention on the right to what happens. So did you see it happen? This page still did a full refresh, but on the right, we picked up the change 
it was re-rendered on the server and then updated in the DOM in place. So again, if you watch the right screen here, as I update on the left, completed and completed. Updating in real time without us having to write any extra code other than moving the partial and editing a couple sync calls. And then you can see on the left here, my browser still does a full refresh for this, so it's not necessarily real time for me. And luckily, uh, Rails makes this super easy for us. We can just change that form to a remote true. If I go back to that partial, the to list row, all of my forms, really, I can just use the built-in Rails remote true option, just say, hey, submit this via Ajax. And then for each of my um, remove and delete icons here, I'm just using a Rails link to method delete method put for updating. Uh, we can actually just add a remote true for here as well. So do all these over Ajax for us. We'll refresh again. The cool thing here is now on my own screen, I see this updating in real time. Just by submitting that call via Ajax, letting the controller re-render and resync everything, it's real time on my screen as well as this other users. So we can also watch for uh, to destroy events and then remove these rows from the DOM. And that's as easy as one line of code. So we'll go into the to-do's controller. We have the destroy action here. We can add a sync destroy to-do. Go back to my app. Now if I destroy this with an Ajax request, boom, and it's from both screens, uh, sync that destroy. So we've been able to watch for updates and deletes and update the partial and remove the partial where applicable, but what about creating new records and creating new to-dos? If I had a new to-do over here on the left, I'd like to see it pop up on the right. We can go back to the project show where we're syncing the existing partials. And all we have to do to watch for new to-dos, wherever we want this to appear in the DOM, we can just say sync new partial to-do list row. The resource just be a new to-do. And we want to scope this to our project, right? So we want to watch for only to do is created for this project, not any globally created to do's. So now, anytime a to do is created for this project, right here in the DOM, it should be inserted with a to do list template. And again, to make this happen, we go to the to do's controller, go to our create action. So, if anytime a to do is successfully created, you can say sync new to do. And remember, we want to only scope this to the current project. So only people that belong to this project can receive updates for this to do. So with two lines of code, we can go over here, refresh. And then we also want to make this form down here uh, submit via Ajax. And we'll just change this to remote true. So it submits over Ajax. So again, if you watch the left and right, some new to do here, major bug. Boom, both real time left and right was inserted into the DOM here. Now if you watch, it actually, it was bound up with syncing as well. So inserted into the DOM and then also bound to watch for updates and destroys. Uh, so this is pretty cool. Um, but the only thing missing, if you notice as I'm updating these, the number of completed to-dos actually isn't updating. So we're syncing in real time the to-do updating, but our project header template is not seeing the changes. So we'd have to refresh to find out up top if three are completed of six. So let's actually make this happen. We'll go back to the project show. And you see how we're rendering this project header here? Let's just take the same approach that we were taking with the to-dos, we'll change render partial to sync partial. We're going to sync the project header template and we'll just say the resource is that project. And again, all we have to do is move the project's project header template into a, a sync projects folder. 
I'll do that with the command line here. And now in our controller, in our to-dos controller, anytime a to-do is created, updated, and destroyed, we actually need to say sync update project. So update this project partials anytime a to-do is sync updated or destroyed. Right? Go back to our app. And let's see if this works. I'm gonna start marking these as completed. And if you notice our complete account, updates in real time on both of our screens. That was with just moving a partial into a folder, sync folder, and then notifying the controller that this needs updated. So this works for deleting as well. You notice our to-do count was off here. It just so happens in our controller, we actually need to say uh, dot .reload here because Rails will memoize its collections and uh, occasionally lose track here. And there we go. So that's the gist of how you perform real-time updates with Sync. Um, but Sync also lets you hook into any of the actions it's doing with your own custom JavaScript or CopyScript. And let me show you how to do that. So if you notice in our project show, we had kind of a verbose partial name here, and that's actually for a very good reason. If I want to maybe fade in a new partial instead of having it show up instantly, you know, this shows up instantly. Maybe it's a little bit jarring, but if we wanted to have that, maybe have a nice pretty fade in. And that's actually very easy to do. We can define our own custom class based on the camel case version of the snake case partial name. So I can define a sync dot to do list row, extend that from sync dot view. So sync will look for any classes of your partial names, camel case, and instantiate that instead of the normal base view. And then we can hook in, we can hook into really every action that sync performs when it's doing a delete, an update, or an on new create. So in our case, we want to do before insert. It has an element for us that is we're about to insert. We actually want to just say, let's hide that element that's not inserted yet, and then proceed with the insert of that element. So it's going to insert an element that will be hidden. It will replace our current element, and then after insert, so after it replaces the current element, we can then just say our current element of the view Fade in slow. Okay, go back to our app and refresh. Now if you watch, this should fade in. And there it is, it fades in on both screens. So pretty cool. So what about fading out? Maybe when we delete, instead of having it disappear instantly, maybe we'd like to see it fade out as well. Again, that's just a matter of hooking into some of these methods that Sync provides. So instead of before insert, after insert, we have before remove. And all we have to do here is say element fade out slow. And then when you're done fading out, go ahead and proceed with the remove. Okay. We'll refresh both of our browsers, pick up the JavaScript changes. And when, what about, let's delete this new to-do. We should see it fade out on both screens. And there we go, fades out and then it's removed. So pretty cool. So you can hook into really everything that Sync's doing and also bind to your own custom JavaScript. So I won't go over everything here, but if you check out the Sync source code, uh, the Sync view base class has quite a few hooks that you can hook into and a couple no operations like bind that gets called every time the Sync uh, view changes. So Sync is a kind of, kind of removes the need to write all this JavaScript, but gives you the flexibility to do it when you need it. So that's Sync. I think it's a great alternative to some of the other options right now. And for certain use cases, I think it's tough to beat as far as productivity and just enjoyment wise for building out real-time applications. I'd love to know what you think about it. Uh, let me know on Twitter or if you have any issues or something's not quite working to how you'd like it or your use case isn't quite covered, uh, open an issue on GitHub. And I'd love to see how far we can take this approach. Thanks a lot.